Welcome and thanks again for joining us. Um, today's webinar is titled Deliberating Colorado Water Issues. How should we meet the challenges of increasing water demands in Colorado? And while we do not have an answer for this question, uh, we, we can um, provide a tool for how to navigate conversations and deliberation around questions such as these. So um, we'll start off with some introductions. My name is Hillary Mason. I'm the Environmental Literacy Coordinator for the Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education in Denver, Colorado. We're a statewide member-driven organization, um, and we support environmental education needs across all sectors of the Colorado community. Um, and co-presenting today, I'm very fortunate to be joined by my colleagues and fellow CAE members and a board member, uh, Sarah and Kelly. So Sarah and Kelly, uh, uh, let's start with Sarah. Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do? Sure. So if you're looking at that picture, Hillary's on the far right and I'm on the far left. Um, so I am a, the, the owner and founder of Wild Rose Consulting, which is based in Carbondale, Colorado on the Western Slope. And um, some of my work involves uh, working with the Colorado Foundation for Water Education, as well as other education and um, outreach projects around water issues in, um, in the state and across the region. I'm also the vice president of the board of directors for CAEE, and um, thrilled to be part of this awesome function, this awesome team that put this together. So, Great. and now to you, Kelly. Great. Great. Well. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Gorman. I'm the program director at Yampa Chica up in Steamboat Springs. We're a small environmental education organization um, that serve, I'd say, K through gray. So we're in the schools, we're out snowshoeing, we're doing lots of different programs throughout the entire year. Um, and I'm very fortunate to be able to work with Sarah and Hillary on a special project like this. Great. Thanks so much. Um, and thank you both for sharing your expertise on today's topic. I know both of you have a lot of insight and experience in water and education as well. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our agenda for today. Uh, so participants today um, will leave with a better understanding about deliberation within the context of environmental education. Um, and we're going to explore deliberation as a methodology that can not only build awareness of environmental issues, um, such as those related to water availability, but also facilitate civic engagement around those environmental issues. Um, and specifically questions about what should we do about an environmental issue? Um, Kelly is going to, I'm gonna go ahead and start us off and provide a little bit of context, and then Kelly is going to discuss the goals of a deliberative forum and differentiate between deliberation and other participatory approaches uh, to public discourse on environmental issues. Um, so in other words, beyond just talking about the issue itself, we are going to discuss how deliberation might engage stakeholder values in issues. Um, so we, while we won't be talking too much about um, uh, water issues specifically, um, we'll be talking more about how to engage those stakeholder values. Then we're gonna move on to a description of how a deliberation forum actually works and what to expect during a deliberative forum um, and how the Colorado Water Framework came about. So we'll be exploring a framework that we developed um, to uh, guide deliberation forums um, around water availability in Colorado. So, um, and Kelly's going to go ahead and provide some examples as well as Sarah on how this framework has been used in educational settings. Um, and then uh, Sarah will be um, kind of tying the ribbon on everything with um, uh, sharing some resources and how deliberation has been used nationwide. Um, and providing some information on Environmental Issues Forum series. Um, sorry about that, folks. I'm going to try and get my screen. There we go. All right. 
Um, at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to just type them in the chat board. We're going to kind of be co-piloting the chat board um, together. All right, so let's, let's set the context for this collaboration. Um, if you see on your screen, um, there's quite a few entities and organizations um, that are involved in this unique effort. So in, in just to set some context for why we're here today, in November 2015, um, an invitation was sent on behalf of the North American Association for Environmental Education, or NAAEE, um, and this invitation was sent to the Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education's Executive Director, Katie Nabin. Um, and the request was to send three Colorado uh, representatives to attend an Environmental Issues Forum research exchange uh, focused on water. And this research exchange uh, was set to take place at the Kettering Foundation in Dayton, Ohio. So the exchange brought Sarah and Kelly and I together along with 18 other environmental educators um, from different states, from Florida, Kentucky, Wisconsin, and Kansas. Um, and we were in Ohio to learn more about naming and framing environmental issues, specifically around water and how to guide public deliberation. Um, and this is all going towards the next set of environmental issues forums materials on water. Um, so the vision of this collaboration um, is to create those materials moder modeled after the National Issues Forum series. Um, and these materials could then be easily customized and adapted to different geographies. So, so far this collaboration has produced and published an issue guide on climate change deliberation. Um, it, the issue guide is called Climate Choices um, and is currently working, we're currently working on similar guides for deliberation on issues related to water and energy. And all of these issue guides are part of the Environmental Issues Forum series um, in partnership with NAAEE and all the partners you see on your screen there. So as a result of this collaboration um, in starting in November 2015 and with the help of Dr. Leah Sprain at CU Boulder um, in the communications department, um, we completed and produced a Colorado specific framework for deliberation around the issue of water availability in Colorado. So we used a community wide survey uh, to inform our work at the very um, start. Uh, and then we developed a framework of options and trade-offs, which Kelly is going to describe. And this framework um, has been vetted by partners in the collaboration um, and has, been, has gone through quite two or three test forums um, since it was developed. Um, to set the context for today, um, and specifically um, with environmental education. So we're here um, on behalf of environmental education and using deliberation as a, a tool um, for environmental education. So one thing that I think we can all agree and we all know that um, an environmental issue is, is extremely complex, um, such that there really is no silver bullet approach for solving it. So that while we can ask questions like, what should we do about water availability issues? By and large, there won't be one specific answer um, um, or one uh, silver bullet. Uh, we also know that environmental issues involve many stakeholders at any given time, and those stakeholders hold a diversity of beliefs, worldviews, value systems. So how do we engage those value systems? Um, environmental problems are, are wicked problems. Um, they're characterized by being difficult to define, not lending themselves to easy solutions, and always linked with other problems. Um, so for examples of wicked problems would include uh, improving environmental quality, uh, mitigating and adapting to climate change, or uh, deciding how we should meet the challenges of increasing water demand in Colorado. Um, and that's the, the focus of our efforts here today. Um, so a problem, um, an environmental problem, once named and framed, so it has been named as a problem and framed as such, 
um, becomes an issue when people can't agree over what to do about it. Uh, so having a good idea uh, of the cross-sector representation attending this webinar today, um, you know, we can imagine all of you see a lot of this um, in your work. So what can we do about it? Um, and this is where environmental education comes in. And, and we believe um, in environmental education um, that tools such as these um, are, are powerful uh, for addressing these wicked problems. Um, and when used to address a specific issue, environmental education um, can support civic engagement, uh, helping people learn about the issue, care about it, take action to address it. It, environmental education acknowledges that while we can react to the challenges today, we have to concurrently create a foundation for the future. That being, how can we um, be informed, um, environmentally literate citizens? Um, and how can we equip our learners um, to do the same? So with that in mind and within the context of environmental education, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly right now, and she's going to speak more about uh, deliberation, what a deliberative form looks like, and how she has used this process in her work at Yampatika. All right, thanks, Hillary. Um, well, everybody can see what our definition of deliberation is right up here on the screen. Um, and I think a lot of you may have actually used this um, in one way or another, um, but it's a way for public to weigh um, different approaches to solving problems um, and you're really trying to find a course of action that relates to the community itself. Um, deliberation is a very interesting uh, concept and I hear from a lot of people, I definitely deliberate as opposed to debate, but the more that we dove in and learned about what deliberation is, it, it really opened up my mind to a new way of um, facilitating. Um, let's see. Excellent, thanks Hillary. <laughs> uh, this is actually an incredibly helpful chart to uh, highlight the differences in what a debate really is and what deliberation looks like. Um, I've done this with several high school groups, um, which has been fantastic. And when we first started doing it, it was a little bit difficult for them to understand, oh, we're not gonna do a debate. Um, and talking to the other teachers about what the differences are between a, de a debate and a deliberation was um, was kind of a fun a fun thing to do for or something that was interesting for the teachers to learn about as well. Um, it's really not we're not looking to compete. Um, it's not an argument. We're really looking at several options and we're looking to weigh those options. Um, some of the biggest things about deliberation is really looking at new perspectives. Um, and ensuring that we're respectful um, during the whole process. Uh, a debate can often get very fiery, um, whereas deliberation can get fiery, but there's also the understanding that we will do everything in our power to see someone else's perspective along the way. Um, hey, Kelly, this is Hillary. Just let me know when yep. you want to advance. Oh, great, thanks. I'm uh, not very tech savvy on this side, working over here. <laughs> um, if you want to pop to the next slide, that's great, thanks. So we have a lot of different goals for deliberation. Um, and I, again, this is a great um, visual put together by the Kettering Foundation for us, um, looking at simple goals and kind of those longer term goals. Um, really starting out with learning about an issue itself. Um, some of the goals that I've seen with doing deliberations as well as having people learn to, especially working with young people, having how can they work together as a group, um, having that respect, that baseline set in advance. Um, that goes straight right alongside of issues learning. Um, kind of those midterm goals, looking at um, what are those what are those next steps? What are what are people going to do with the information that they're processing along the way? Um, and eventually, we're really looking at how can we make changes or um, 
get the community involved? What are those next steps that people might be taking along the way? Um, our goals are also very different. Um, it depends on who you're inviting in for a deliberation. If it's a group of high school students, it's going to be quite different than a university student or if you did a deliberation um, in the community on a wider scope. Right, Elle? All right, what is a deliberation? I'll give um, a really quick overview of what this um, process looks like. Um, Hillary gave an introduction of creating a framework um, and kind of the backstory of it all. But when you're when you're coming into a deliberation, from my experience, some of the most important things happen at the very beginning. Um, it's setting the tone, setting up some guidelines and rules, and ensuring it's a, a safe space um, to be able to have these types of conversations. The one of the biggest things that really stood out in deliberation was encouraging and asking people to listen to understand. And it sounds like such a simple concept, but that was um, one of the largest things um, to set that tone of respect throughout. Something that works really well, um, that was really important in the deliberations that I've seen as well, are allowing people to have an opportunity to share their experience with the issue. And it's opening up to the group and asking, what's your experience, what's your interaction with water, what's your viewpoint on it? And it does take quite a bit of time to run through that for the whole entire group, but it really opened things up for a group to participate and feel like they were heard right from the beginning. Um, once you dive into the deliberation itself, um, the moderator is, is there to keep things on track and push things in the right direction. Um, and it's, I found it a little bit challenging to be a moderator. There's some great resources out there so you can learn um, all the tips and, and tricks to good moderating. Uh, but some of the biggest challenges are, are not affirming everything. As environmental educators especially, we're, we're constantly affirming, oh, right, I like that idea. What else do we think? It's really a moderator's role is to um, be unbiased and pull information out and kind of regurgitate what people are saying along the way. Um, Hillary, why don't you go to the next slide if you could. Thanks so much. Um, so we actually use a framework to lead a deliberative process. And this is kind of the front page of what our framework looks like for water availability. Um, we have a big question or that's posed at the beginning. Um, I believe Hillary's already talked about that. How should we meet the challenges of increasing water demands with decreasing water availability in Colorado? Um, we put a little bit of an introduction or background information at the beginning of our framework. And then the framework itself has three options as potential solutions. And each of the options also have examples of what could be done and trade-offs to consider. And those are the really important parts to get people diving in. When you're um, moderating, basically, you'll start with option one and have your participants read through. And then they'll read through and talk about um, which examples really stand out of what could be done. What do they feel could be the best solution? To this challenge. And then on the other side, what are those trade-offs to consider that might be tied directly into those? I mean, this is where I would say the things start to feel like a, a debate once in a while, and it's really um, can be challenging to keep people on track with staying open-minded and not saying there's only one solution. And it's one of the things that really comes out of this is there isn't just one solution. Um, when I can talk about the examples of um, the classes that I've done this with, um, kind of skipping on, I've done it with three different high school classes at this point, um, an AP bio class and two environmental science classes. 
Um, and I worked closely with teachers to find a good fit and, and convince them that they wanted to try something totally new, which was really fun. Um, a couple of the classes I worked with um, throughout a whole semester. Um, so I knew the students really well and two of the classes um, or the other classes, it was a more of a, a one-off visit. Um, and it, I can talk about the pros and cons of that because um, I know a lot of you as educators, sometimes you do one-off visits and some of you are based in a school um, full-time, which is fantastic. So this type of form could work either way. Um, with high school students, I found it was, it was really helpful to have some information provided in advance. Um, so we actually did a water education lesson before starting with the framework just to provide that base information. Um, the one class that I didn't do that with, I had students getting up in the middle of conversation and digging out textbooks and trying to find facts and things like that to to utilize during the deliberation, which was really great to see. Um, so hopefully that'll provide you a little insight on what I've been fortunate to do with deliberative processes. Um, with the high school students, I'll just throw out a couple quick things that really stood out to me. Um, I had the last deliberation I did, I had one student just stop in the middle and say, this is really hard. I don't feel comfortable having to choose one thing over another. Um, and that spurred off into its own conversation about, well, what is hard? Do we have to make hard decisions in life? And what does that look like? Um, we had other students that were really made the decision as a group that they would be willing to adjust their current lifestyles to ensure a better future with water. And we had another group, it was really fascinating, that really felt as though at the end that education was the way forward. Education was the way that we would all um, be able to solve our water problems in Colorado. Without education, no one would get involved. No one would make a difference at all. Um, and as educators, we were all pretty excited to hear that. Um, and I had another class that thought technology was, was the way forward. And they, they thought, oh, well, future technology will help solve everything. So it's Every deliberation seems to be quite different with the outcome, and it's really from the experiences of the participants there and how open they are to discussing things. And really when you're diving in and, and trying to pull out um, to involve students and young people along the way, it's, it's the moderator's job to continue to push things forward and not let them spiral down a bunny hole and off on, um, going too far out on different topics. Um, so f I would say for me, it's been a, a wonderful experience to be able to start doing more of a deliberative forum as, as a way of education. Um, I could probably talk about this a little bit longer, but I'll, I think I'll hand it over to Sarah so she can talk a little bit more about what she's gonna be up to. Thanks, Kelly. And I would just um, invite all of our participants, if you have questions specific to either Kelly or Hillary's presentation so far, to start to type those into the chat box so we can start thinking about how we might want to answer those questions in a little while. So, um, Kelly, that was awesome to hear about your experience in Steamboat Springs. Um, and if you could advance the slide, Hillary, that would be great. So I want to share with all of you a little bit about how the EIF or the Environmental Issues Forums are in the country um, and not just, and so we're kind of zooming out a bit from um, the work that we have been doing as a team here. So the work we've been doing to create the Colorado Water Issues Forum guide is a piece of the Environmental Issues Forum's larger project. EIF program is, a, as Hillary said, is a partnership between the North American Association for Environmental Education and the Kettering Foundation. And just some examples of how the different to, um, EIF tools are getting used. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the CAEE, Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education Cert Educator Certification Program. So many states have these certification programs and in Kentucky, Moderator training for environmental issues forums is, um, as I understand it, has been included in that certification, which is 
pretty cool and maybe could be inst in, um, instituted into other states' certification programs as well in the future. Also, in other states, um, Kelly and Hillary and I have been fortunate to work with folks from Kentucky and Florida and Wisconsin and Kansas and others, and we've learned a ton about what's going on around the country. And one of the most common things that I've picked up on is that the university extension programs around the, around the country have really strong um, water education programs for both adults and kids and students. And, and so this using deliberation with more adult audiences is being experimented with in Florida, Wisconsin, and Kansas through their land grant university extension programs at the land grant universities. And there's links to these examples. These states have, we have examples um, on the North American Association for Environmental Education website. So we'll be able to share those with you. And then also, um, deliberation is used in higher education a fair amount, especially right here in our own state of Colorado, up at CSU and Fort Collins. Um, one of the programs within the university there is called the Center for Public Deliberation. And they actually train students, both graduate and undergraduate students, to frame issues. They, based on what I've learned about them, it sounds like they mostly work on local issues in, um, in, their, in the county there in Fort Collins and in the local region. And they take local issues and have students help frame them and then teach students how to moderate forums, which is a, a pretty neat um, thing. And these centers for public life, as they're sometimes called, um, exist at universities all over the country. So that's happening um, a lot of places in different formats, of course, at different, places, at different universities. The University of Colorado in Boulder, they have a communication studies program that has trained, some of their faculty are trained as mod deliberation moderators. We actually worked with one of them to do our test forums and to get her, um, Leah, her professional um, suggestions as we did test forums. There's also um, at the University of Colorado Denver, where Hillary is um, involved in programming there, is the Environmental Science in the School of Education and Human Development program. And then also, um, some more, um, to dive in a little bit more on what's going on at these other states that we learned about, and Eastern Kentucky University has a lot of really cool stuff going on. Their division of natural, they have a university division of natural areas and the College of Education has come together to create a couple different courses one is a biology course, 500 level biology course called Environmental Issues, where they learn to identify, investigate, and evaluate environmental issues and plan appropriate actions. And then the other one is actually a 500 level course in um, the education department, and it's a teaching environmental education methods course. And they explore the appropriate methods and materials for effective environmental education in a variety of settings in that class and you can imagine how deliberation could be considered one of the many methods to teach environmental education with different audiences. So it's neat that that's part of the curriculum there and they are, they're explore, they're continue to find ways to improve their um, implementation of using environmental forums, both in the biology course, it sounds like they are using it with students to just have a forum and in the education course, they're actually incorporating moderator training into the, um, the, the class as well. And I tell you all this because the ideas of how to implement um, the, the deliberative forums into the, all the work you guys are all up to, is, it's endless how creative you could be on where you use this tool. Um, at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, they do all kinds of, um, they're leading the way in a lot of environmental education efforts um, in our country. And, within their College of Natural Resources, and they have partnered up with the Wisconsin Center um, for Environmental Education, and they have been um, using a deliberative forum in their environmental issues investigation and action course, which is another upper level, upper division course. And again, they're, they're not only teaching students how to explore um, issues as we have been taught in environmental education um, the whole how to explore an issue 
how, but also how to use deliberation. So there's a lot more resources on the NAAW website about these two examples. There's actually a whole webinar you could watch if you are a person from higher education. Um, I, I highly recommend that um, just to kind of get a flavor for what's possible, even more of what's possible. So if you want to advance the slide, that'd be great. And so the environmental issues forums, as we have mentioned um, before, includes a variety of, of um, materials, but also forum guides. And as I understand it, there's the intention is to continue to create more um, forum guides with time. And so the first one that was done a number of years ago was called Energy Choices. I'm going to go a little bit out of order with this slide. And so that was one of the first ones. And now there, there's a team of people working on revising it. But the one that's most complete and most available right now is called Climate Choices. And it's, of course, about climate change. And it is basically breaks down um, how do we, how should we meet the challenges of a warming planet? And it offers up three or four options of what potential options could be. And there's been a lot of energy put behind getting this in, this resource into classrooms um, at different age, age levels. So I was actually part of a small team that helped to create some middle school teacher resources. There are, there was also, there's also high school teacher resources that were created. And all, again, all this stuff is on this website that we're um, going to share with you. And there's also a lot of other supporting materials for climate choices. And one little tidbit of, somebody told us, it was a small secret, but um, the these issue forum guides are downloadable as PDFs for free for like a year and a half or so, and then they make you start having to pay for them. Earlier this week, and it's still available for download as a PDF. Um, and once you have to pay for them, they're only a couple dollars a piece. But if you're interested in ever using this tool, um, you might as well take advantage of the free resource while it's free. And then you can make copies of it to use with your students or your um, audience. Again, it's written for a lay audience of adults, but it very well can be tailored for high school and middle school students. And there's a goal to get this tool in, um, utilized in over 100 classrooms for 2016. And I haven't I met that goal exactly, but um, there's still, I guess we could say we're piloting this Climate Choices book. And um, would love for you, for people in Colorado to be part of that, because I think we bring a yet another unique perspective to the world of how do we deal with environmental issues, and all these other states are in, in, involved as well all over the country, why not us too? So take advantage of that. And then finally, um, there are a few of these other water frameworks um, online, and I think what's so useful about them is I was looking at them a little closer recently, and um, the University of Florida Extension has one that is, they have actually have two of them. One that's based about dealing with spring restoration and protection, um, so groundwater springs, and, and then also one all about stormwater and how stormwater, or um, how do we manage our stormwater and keep stormwater from um, affecting our groundwater. So there's two there that I think, especially the stormwater one, we in Colorado could probably take and look at and maybe um, potentially use parts and pieces of it. We'd have to rewrite the whole thing to make it work for Colorado, but, but I think there's, there's things to be gleaned from that. And then the Wisconsin one is also about groundwater. And so the, you can look those up and just kind of get a flavor for what's possible. And who knows, maybe in the future between um, CAEE and maybe the Foundation for Water Education and maybe some other partners, maybe we would have the capacity to to write more framework tools um, for us to use here in our state. Um, again, the opportunities are kind of endless as long as it all just has to do with how much time we all want to put into things and have the capacity to, to do. Finally, I think it's really important to mention that these water, the Colorado Water Issues Forum that, were, that we created, this framework that we created that I put a link in the chat box to if you haven't already found it, um, this works towards meeting goals of the Colorado Water Plan, which many of you are familiar with, which we chose to work on the, the, the 
We chose the issue of water quantity as our issue to frame because that is, was, is such a humongous issue in Colorado and, and it's highly supported by the work of the Colorado Water Plan. And so there's not a, a formal agreement with or formal relationship with the work we've done and the Colorado Water Plan, but I think we definitely took the plan into account as well as many, many other well-respected and proven and tried resources to create the content for this framework. Um, many of the resources from the citizens guides that, that the Colorado Foundation for Water Education puts together that you can also get read those on mine for free. So we, we worked very much in a big kind of broad view and we tried really hard to not recreate the wheel but also to use utilize the work that many of us have been and many others have all been a part of over the years. So we hope it's a useful tool. Go for it. So with that we've um, one more thing I want to tell you all is that Kelly and I were able to participate in an all-day moderator training um, in Madison, Wisconsin back in October. And I would say that both of us, as well as Hillary, um, we're all three available would be, to all of you to, um, to either help come and do moderate a, a forum or just to be available as a resource on the phone or however we can assist folks in helping to make this happen. Um, and help you feel confident using these tools. So with that, if you have any questions, please go ahead and start typing those in. We've, we've, you're all on mute, so we can't hear you, but we can read your questions. And Kelly and Hillary, is there anything we missed that we wanna add in? Uh, no, Sarah and Kelly, um, this is Hillary. I just wanted to thank you, um, Kelly, specifically, you know, for your anecdotes that, that you provided in working with um, local high schools. And um, uh, Kelly, uh, for all of you um, joining us today, Kelly's a great resource. So she's actually used um, this framework of options, actions and trade-offs, or possible actions and trade-offs, and has has presented this um, to, uh, along with a uh, cooperating teacher, to high school groups. Um, and has, uh, she mentioned earlier, um, has experienced great success, the students were interested. Um, and then as Sarah mentioned, um, this can also, this framework um, that we have created um, is, uh, you know, useful for a lay audience as well. So whether you're in education, um, or um, in an edu formal education setting or non-formal education. Um, the, the framework can be used to guide deliberation, and that's really um, the, the intent for the framework, is to guide deliberation at this point. And so eventually that framework is going to be um, integrated with other state frameworks um, that are also on this research, research exchange um, into creating a, a full-blown uh, issue guide and materials uh, that go along with that. And it looks like we have a few questions. Yeah, Hillary, I'll, I'll attempt to ask or answer Donnie Rausch's question. Um, so Donnie and all the rest of you who are familiar with the water plan and the Colorado Foundation for Water Education's water fluency and water leaders programs. So the answer is absolutely this tool could be utilized in any water education opportunity. I mean, and that is, it's endless, whether it's a rotary meeting or it's a leadership development program like Water Leaders. Um, I participated in this entire project on my own and not under the guises of the Water Educator Network. Um, so it's not a piece of the Foundation for Water Education right now, but that doesn't mean it can't become one. Um, and I think that's why we're doing this webinar is to introduce people to it so that we can find ways and opportunities to incorporate trainings and and get it out there and empower people to use it. And as far as also the state education curriculum content, um, I'm not as familiar 
as where if deliberation where it falls if it's even included in the social studies standards or somewhere along those lines um, but if you're not familiar the current Colorado academic standards is for revisions right now and I think they're taking public comment on these through middle of February and CAEE has put together a website a web page explaining this process of how to add comments and I have added a few comments of, to incorporate more water related um, components to the existing academic standards but I would highly and, and other people have as well that have um, included some comments and I just I think if we had all the people on this webinar include some comments about including more water um, focused pieces into the standards that would be amazing um, and but I would if you do take the time to do that we can we'll include the link on how to do that um, into our final email to you but we I would just recommend that you write very pointed and clear and specific comments to the existing standards so not just a blanket statement but actually open up the standards and make suggestions per line by line kind of situation because I think they'll be better um, received in that way and I this is Hillary I'm, I'll go ahead and expand on that that point um, with um, both uh, in, you know trying to t find some ties or connections to the to the water plan um, and the state um, education curriculum um, and that that is definitely something that um, we we should and 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 could look forward to at this um, this very 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 new effort um, here in new collaboration so um, those are actually some really good ideas in in terms of looking ahead so thank you well maybe if there's no more questions maybe we can spur some more questions with our next slide Hillary and so there are some very specific opportunities for you to learn even more. And one of those is that we are going to, the three of us are actually going to host a live deliberation of Colorado water issues using this framework on Saturday afternoon, March 11th, during the CAEE annual conference in Denver. And so if you're headed to that conference, make sure to check out that session on Saturday afternoon. Um, the conference we would invite you to come <laughs> because everyone's in everyone is invited to the, you can come for the day or just for, for the entire conference so um, that'll be an excellent opportunity to see what a moderated deliberation can look like it's not on this slide because I forgot to put it there but I'm putting together a Gunnison River teacher this summer in the starting on June 19th and during that teacher professional development workshop for the whole week we're going to incorporate a deliberation and how to use this tool into that week-long professional development opportunity that's also partnered up with the Colorado Water Workshop, which is a water conference that happens in Gunnison every summer. And then finally, we've mentioned these tools. So there's all these free resources that you can download and watch in videos and um, all kinds of different interactive tools anyway on the website the NAAE website and then finally the Kettering Foundation has put a lot of energy into creating this whole this program they've called the common ground for action and they realize that not everybody has the capacity of, to travel to always go to participate in in-person deliberative forums and so they've created this online interface to conduct forums and at some point water our water into this online tool but we haven't done that yet but in the meantime if you're interested in seeing what's possible you can participate in these online free forums and they as Hillary mentioned in the very beginning these deliberative forums have taken on wicked issues of all kinds everything from healthcare to education to guns and violence and this week they're looking um, the common ground for action is doing these free online forums um, with the topic being the political fix how do we get american politics back on track 
and I have participated in a number of probably two or three of these and I it they're really really cool and it's not like a webinar it's a very interactive thing where you're typing in comments and you're reading and listening and two hours goes by really quick and um, it's just a really great introduction to what a deliberative forum can kind of the feel of that and I, I highly recommend it you can also get on their email list and find out about other free forums that are coming up in their calendar um, in the coming weeks and months so we hope that you'll take all of this and just kind of absorb it and digest it and look at some of these tools and maybe we'll hopefully see you in Denver um, on March 10th and 11th during the conference and again we are all resources to you um, and in this email that we're going to send we will include our contact information our emails and um, let us let us help be a resource in any way we can and with that if there's any other questions to type in to the chat box it's unusual to get have a webinar go quicker than usual typically they go longer <laughs> it's kind of awesome All right. Um, so while um, folks are, are maybe thinking of some, some questions, I know that was a lot of information um, presented. And believe it or not, that's just the tip of the iceberg um, in terms of, of how the naming and framing process goes and um, how um, research exchanges uh, go about creating frameworks for different environmental and social issues. Um, and then once those um, frameworks are completed and issue guides are completed, um, holding deliberative forums um, with those frameworks to guide those, um, that deliberation. And then, um, you know, kind of the, the, the end all be all is to get um, feedback and get a gauge for um, what the general public is thinking about some of these larger issues. And that feedback um, from these forums um, ideally feeds into um, some of the uh, publications uh, that Kettering puts together. So they, they basically synth synthesize all of the um, information that comes from the online forums and in-person forums um, through their uh, moderators who have been trained um, and have gone through a training process, which you all can do. Um, um, and um, that, that feeds into um, uh, public knowledge and awareness um, and, and potentially policy making in some instances. Um, so with that said, Sarah and, and Kelly, is there, is there any, are there any enduring lingering thoughts that you have before we close for the day? Kelly, are you, are you? Sorry, I had the microphone muted. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to add unless there's questions that come along with them. No, it's um, been great to know that a number of you on the on the webinar today. It's um, and I look forward to running into you guys in person in the coming months. And um, thanks so much. All right, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, a recording is going to be available and sent out, as well as a. Um, many um, links there are so many materials out there um, we'll also let you know if there's any online forums coming up that you can participate in um, we are just um, getting trained on how to moderate the online forums um, as well so again this is you know fairly new for for everyone but holds a lot of potential um, and we hope that you all can um, take a look at it do a little bit of digging and investigating and see how you can um, apply uh, these issue guides and frameworks to your work, um, specifically around water. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and close there and um, have a great rest of the day.